So, hi. Um, Ricky again. Um, uh, we'll get that spot. I am part of the practicization team. So, my team, we basically build and release um, AAP, which is, um, you know, uh, the product that we saw at Red Hat. And, you know, apart from that, so we do, we also, you know, take care of the, the various things that we do uh, as part of the platform as well, clouds. Now it's going to be EDA, maybe wisdom, I don't know. Um, I'm going to talk about, you know, some of the stuff that we are responsible for. Um, and, you know, um, how you could maybe, you know, contribute and, you know, give us feedback. So as part of our responsibilities, we, we take care of the um, operators uh, slash installers for AAP. Um, and uh, so uh, the operators for controller, uh, hub, uh, resource operator, and uh, we contribute to the upstream parts of, of that. Yeah. So this is the repo for, um, for uh, installing AWX. So um, this is where you know my team contributes. Um, a lot of contributions you know, from Christian, who should be really be, uh, be here doing this talk rather than me because he knows all this stuff. Hello, Christian. Um, we also, um, you know, um, help develop, you know, maintain the uh, AWS resource operator. Uh, how many of you know or have used the resource operator? Any hands up? No? Yeah, it's not a well-known or maybe widely used thing because it's relatively new. So basically, it's, it's a, it is a, an operator that allows you to create custom resources in Kubernetes to, that map out to things in, in AWS or controller. So basically, if you wanted to do an Ansible job run, rather than go into the UI on AWS or controller, you can actually create a manifest in, in Kubernetes, and that's, there's going to be a controller, the resource operator controller, who's going to pick that up, and it's going to connect to controller and do the underlying uh, job run. Um, yeah. Apart from that, so uh, we also have, uh, uh, we contribute to pub because it's what we use for hub. I think Fabrizio is here, he's uh, your pub guy. <laughs> so it's good that you came because I'm going to ask you, you know, most of stuff. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, so for the things that we, we have under the Ansible or I don't know about pub because I don't have that context. So we use uh, the Operator SDK framework. Uh, it's a project that um, you know Red Hat you know basically maintains and you know develops. It's a framework for building Kubernetes operators. And one of the cool things about Operator SDK is that it not only allows you to build Golang-based operators, but you can also build Ansible-based operators and Helm-based operators. Meaning, if you are an awesome automator with, uh, with Ansible, which you know, I expect you to, you to be, and you have expertise for installing, configuring, I don't know, imagine Nextcloud, right? And you, know, you want to move to Kubernetes, um, you could actually use this framework and uh, leverage your work uh, you know, roles and playbooks for installing that application. And you know, it, it helps you to scaffold that for building an operator to just use that. It's just Ansible under the covers. Um, then, so, uh, one of the things that, you know, I recently joined, uh, I don't have a lot of context, and, you know, maybe, you know, Fabrizio, you know, could give more context about this. Uh, the pop guys, you know, six months back, they proposed to move away from an Ansible base operator to Go, and they put this as part of, um, the one, some reasons for it. Uh, you know, I can read it better debugging control the logs, pass through the point execution, ability to add unit tests, uh, you know. And another thing is that, you know, uh, you know, it's the way it is. So, um, you know, um, Golang-based operators, they're more popular, you know, in the internet, you know, in the tech communities, uh, compared to Ansible. That doesn't mean anything, it's just the way it is. So, that raised, you know, kind of, you know, some uh, discussions, you know, in our team, whether, you know, we you know, if the pop guys, you know, they're doing that, I mean, maybe we should start, you know, uh, you know, exploring how it would look like 
to use Golang base operators in some of our stuff. And we started doing a POC on the resource operator, which is not uh, you know, as big as uh, Ansible base operator, how it would look like. And we just literally started. And we are also evaluating whether it would make sense or not for um, the, the upcoming EDA operator that is going to, to install the, the controller side of things for EDA, if you will. So now, I'm going to give you my personal uh, opinion. I think that Ansible based operators are great. We're Ansible community and you know, um, you know, why should be doing things in Golang? I mean, I know Golang, I've written, you know, Golang based operators that they're, you know, actually using Objective and whatnot. But, you know, I don't think that we have to migrate per se. Um, so, uh, this is just me and my team. We wanted to get feedback, uh, you know, if you use the AWX operator, resource operator, any kind of feedback, do you think, you know, um, you know they're, uh, they're not fast enough, uh, they're hard to debug, uh, you know, lack of logging, so we can actually improve and, you know, maybe, you know, get contributions. So anyone that uses the operator that wants to get the back, no, this is going to be a fast discussion. So I, I've only briefly used the AWS operator. I don't use it in my day-to-day, -day, but I've used it to set up AWS because, well, that's how you set up AWS today. Step one, you need different entities, yeah. you know? Um, and I, I was able to follow the logs of the deployment, and um, it was interesting how it was actually Ansible output, right? Because yeah. underneath, it's running Playbook. Um, so my understanding, where I'm getting with this is today there are playbooks somewhere that's able to deploy AWX. Will these would these continue to be maintained if you go the Golang route? Would it would it still be possible to deploy AWX using Ansible in other? I cannot comment. I mean, if you ask me, I mean, I don't. You know, I'm not part of the control team, and I, you know, the 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 AWX Ansible based operator is not going anywhere. What I'm trying to gauge is. Number one, you know, since the pop operator, you know, they moving to Golang and, you know, they have some reasons for it. I want to understand that we, from the Ansible side, if there are reasons for us to, you know, consider a similar move, um, then, you know, I can change that, you know, to the tech leads from controller, John is here, so on and so forth. But I don't want to give the wrong impression that, oh, you know, we, we're going to shelve, you know, what we have today, we want to move to Golang. It's just, you know, we want to understand, because some other parts of the community that, you know, we work with, they have done that. And it, I want to make sure that, you know, if there's a legitimate, you know, uh, reason that we should do that kind of thing, that makes sense. How do you, how do you folks think about, you know, maybe you know, maybe a more, um, you know, a specific question. What do you think about, you know, the CRDs for the operators today? Do you think, it, like, they are hard to understand because they're kind of monolithic? Like, you know, the IWS is like a, this kind of thing for Redis, Fuzzer, SQL, yada, yada, yada. Or do you think, you know, um, is it, does it bother you? Do you think, you know, they should be maybe broken up in multiple CRDs and controllers? Any feedback in that regard? Okay. Well, it's the same. Nobody was the same. Good news. So another thing that I wanted to ask you, one of the things that I have um, noticed as a, not now, but I've been a Golang developer and I've developed a few operators for previous role. You know, the it, that's what it is. The blogosphere, if you go to Stack Overflow, you go to the competition, you go to whatever. Um, for developing a new Golem based operator, you can find you know a lot of information, and that's not something. Even though the documentation of the operator is DK, you know, for building a single based operators is great. Something that I personally think that you know we may be lacking, and it would be great to have, is like you know actually example and documentation on how you know to build an Ansible based operator for this particular use case. Has anyone, any of you, written an Ansible based operator? That because I was thinking that maybe. It would be a good idea from a community perspective to set up, to have some sort of a the Kubernetes 
uh, ecosystem ha have this concept of awesome operators repository where people can just, you know, contribute uh, an operator they have developed. But, you know, I can tell you, I'm 90 something percent is Golang based. So if you folks uh, have developed or know of any Ansible based operator, uh, it would be great if you maybe just put it on the wiki page or in the uh, matrix or something, because I think it would be great to put some content there uh, because it helps, you know, developers to create more Ansible based operators and just not just, you know, go with the Golang route. Nobody has developed any operator? Oh, they're going to take a quick one. <laughs> yeah, I know you have. <laughs> you are the pop operator guy, <laughs> among others. You said, I can make the people understand what this is for and how they might use it in their groups. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, oh, by the way, if anyone is interested in getting involved in they want to learn a goal line or whatever, and they want to be involved in the Ansible side of things of with the operator SDK, let me know because I plan to, now that I'm in Ansible, to be involved in this because we, we are interested in keeping this maintained and, you know, you know, get more contributions. But obviously, if you want to contribute, let me know. Uh, drop, you know, something on a note on HackMD or, you know, Matrix. I'll make sure that, you know, I can I'll connect you to the right people, to the right channels on the operator SDK so we can just contribute and get together. Maybe, Fabrizio, you want to comment about your roadmap, the reasoning for that? Because otherwise it's going to be a long avenue. Or, you know, we could give, you know, time back to people. Yeah, I, I can, like, give, like, a brief uh, we have explanation. You want to come? We only have the one, so. Just, yeah. Careful. Okay, yeah. yeah, maybe, you know, just, you know, sort of refresh. I don't know if you have the tip. Yeah, can, can. Oh, hear me? Okay, okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, so I think, he, like, talking about PWX and, and I think the AWX is good for Ansible because we have, I think, only one deployment, if I'm not wrong. And on top we have, I think, five or six. And we had like eight roles for defining the variables and all the things that we need to do to these deployments. And you know, like, naming is very hard. So every variable that we start to serve, like, you to be like pulp blah 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 and sometimes you do like i don't know pop in each in one role and you do pop it in another role so one variables is overriding the order and for debugging it it was like really painful because you're like oh you, you are like looking one role and seeing that oh everything is all right here but then you realize that your error is coming from another role that has a variable that with the same name and all these things. So that was like the major pain point for, for Pope. And, and that's why we start to discuss and, and, and realize like, oh, I think like AWX is okay because it's not handling like so uh, many moving parts as Pope does. Gotcha. And, and, and I think this is like overall, and the other things that, that, that we get like from the goal is like the, the debugging and uh, also like this, this was, was like the plus benefits, but, but the main thing was like debugging things like because when you have an issue, you tend to look just to the role like, oh, I'm having a, a issue with the pop role content. So you go to the, the content role and see, oh, everything's all right here. But then you have to realize, oh no, maybe this is coming from somewhere else and all these things. So the bugging was becoming like very painful with the time. The more things we've been adding to the roles and to the operator, it was getting more complex. Yeah, so I'm thinking that maybe this is a good opportunity to, because from what I'm um, parsing from you is that it's not as good for testing as compared to Golang. So maybe, you know, we can hook in, you know, developer tools 
uh, you know, guys and, you know, contributors in that area to contribute to the operator's decay so, you know, we can have mm -hmm. like a feature parity there. So you're saying that from the unit testing perspective, it's like it's not as good. Yes, I, I, I didn't really think about the unit in testing it, but yeah, it's kind, kind of it because I think it would be more a functional test because it's the relationship among the roles and not just like if you have just one role to control one deployment and so on, it's okay. But if you want to have multiple roles, that that's the thing that starts to get confusing. Mm -hmm. I think it's more about the Pope user case than than the framework. Itself. Yeah, than the framework okay. itself. Further? Uh, yeah, I I don't know if if I need to. I think I, it's I can handle it back to. <laughs> <laughs> so any uh, yeah sorry oh. yeah any other feedback questions you have. Uh, interest to contribute to be involved in this uh, let me know or drop something on the HackMD or Matrix I'll be happy to connect with you yep. Do we have any Instruct Lab or something to intro to writing operators? I, we had something previously but I think it was Calicoda or something You mean like an Instruct framework um, workshop? Yeah Yeah, I've, I'm not sure mm -hmm. I mean the I mean, the operator SDK, you know, documentation is really good, but again, you know, it's just, I, I am not aware of workshops on this, right? I think it would be great to have them. And besides that, you know, at least, you know, have examples of, you know, hey, you know, I have this project, this, to, um, this software that I'm using, this sensible base operator, because that's what really helps people to develop their own. So I, that's where I think, you know, we're lacking. Because again, you know, I'm a Golden developer, you know, I have no problem just Googling and, you know, finding stuff for already available operators. But for Ansible base, you know, besides that, I'm not sure there must be. It's just, you know, a searchability problem, I think. But, yeah, I mean, I'll be more than happy. Yeah, maybe, you know, we can connect with the PME folks with the structure stuff, right? Yeah, I can work on that. Any feedback? Okay, then I guess you know we can call it. Thank, Thank you. you.